man, there's a uh, kind of a misconception of of how it is when when young men go to prison and and what happens to them and they automatically become a victim or they automatically become a target. In some sense, that's true, but in some sense, it isn't. <laughs> Today, let's get into it, man. It's over like a six shot gun and the miles keep dragging no, no, no. Trying to make it home. Rapping all on one life and no wrong. When whistle in the devil's outlaw song. And he's strong to love. Welcome to Gladiator School. Well, I went to prison, I was very young uh, for the first time. I'd already been to juvie. I kind of knew like the robes in some form or fashion, but a lot of ways I didn't. And when I walked into the penitentiary as a 17, 18 year old kid who couldn't grow a beard, barely grow a mustache, very, very, very young features, There are people who prey on individuals that look like that. Now, just because I look like that doesn't mean I'm soft. It doesn't mean it, it doesn't mean anything. What it means is that you're a child. And what you have in the penitentiary are people who prey on children and on women and on people who are weaker. Well, I've talked before about when I was in the county jail and, and that um, you know, I'd I'd fought a little bit. I I would I would fight for mine. Did I win all of them? No. Did I lose all of them? No. I mean, I would kind of take an L, get a W, whatever. It is what it is. That's life, right? That's life. As I get down to the penitentiary, we have these things called annual reviews. Now, annual review is you go up every single year. They're going to calculate points, uh, good and bad. So you can get good points that will drop your level, bad points that will shoot your level up. Well, I caught the thing in the jail on the guy that did the thing to the kid. I know you guys have talked, or we've talked about that before. Certain things I can and cannot say on YouTube anymore. Um, now, <laughs> when I went up for my review, it's a committee, and they're like, you did this, you did this, you did this, right? Da, 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 da. So, my level went from a level two, three to a level five. Six, five, six, right? Now, they don't have a six anymore, but now it's just five. Back then we had six. So I go to Sussex One for the first time. They just built it. 23 and one, super max, penitentiary. This is prison. When In the state of Virginia, you have correctional centers and you have prison. There's only a few prisons in Virginia. Even Greensville is not a, considered a prison. It's a, it's a correctional center, Greensville Correctional Center. But you have Sussex One, state prison. You have... Red Onion, state prison, and you have Wallens Ridge, state prison. These are not fun places to be. This is not kiki ha ha time. This is where you become Willie Lump Lump if you act crazy. I walked in, butt faced, <laughs> you know, uh, just looking crazy, scared, terrified, probably like a deer in headlights. I was in prison. I wasn't at kitty camp. I was in prison at 18 years old around the worst. They were sitting the worst of the worst to this place. So I remember my first day in this place. I remember my celly. His name was Kurt. What's up, Kurt? I don't know what your situation is anymore. You're a good dude. You know, just hope everything is well for you. I know you're doing astronomical amounts of time. Anyway, that being said... I'm unpacking. Back then, they didn't have a tote. You had a bag. It was like a it was like a see through bag. It was just this weirdest thing, like a see through floppy tote that you kept all your stuff in. And what we would do is later on, we would take like saltine boxes and like stack them in there and make like a little box or whatever. As I'm getting my stuff out, I had a little teeny can of tops tobacco that I had brought from my other prison. I hear a knock on my cell door, tink tink tink, and I look over, and there is this man standing there who is as wide as. The door. I remember I couldn't see out the door. 
because his body was so massive. And this was back before they had the haircut uh, profile policy. So he had these long, big, just crazy looking dreadlocks. And he had this big beard. He said, what's up, show? Now, people have different lingos you know, from different you know sides of town in Virginia. Shoddy means they're probably from Richmond, right? What's up, Shoddy? You know, that's how they talk out here, right? I said, what's up, man? And I didn't get a good feeling. You, my spidey senses were going off immediately. I didn't want to be around this person. You know what I'm saying? Like, you get that, that feeling like, okay, this person is a threat. And I remember his eyes. They were just piercing. Just... He never took his eyes off of mine. He's looking for fear. He's looking for weakness. He's looking for me to cower like a dog. And I tried everything I could to just be tough and not look terrified. But I can imagine what my face looked like. Hey, Sheldon, let me get one of those cigarettes. I said, what? Let me get one of them cigarettes. I seen Kurt kind of look back. It's my first day in here. Now, I'd love to sit here and tell you guys that I didn't give him nothing. That I fought the good fight right then and there. It stood for mine like a gangster. But that's not what happened. I don't be 100% real with you. I gave him a cigarette. Here, man. Praying, wishing, hoping he was going to go away. <laughs> nope. He said, appreciate you, Sheldon. I'll holler at you. Dap me up and everything. So I'm thinking, all right, cool, we're good. And I remember dapping this guy up. And his hand, like my hand looked like a baby hand on top of his. It was so, his hand was huge. And I just remember thinking, God, I hope I never feel what that's like to get hit with that. And I'd like to also tell you that that, that, that happened. That I didn't feel it. <laughs> but that's... <laughs> Let's move on with the story. Sorry about the interruption. Anyway, dude, so Kirk kind of pulls my coattails. He's like, look, man, dude's a, dude's, a, dude's a bandit, bro. He wants to check that oil. Now, I came up in a system in the 90s where it was a little bit more racial than it is today. Uh, we never really walked on a racial po political line as far like Cali or Texas and things like that. But we did have our racial lines. And the dude, the white dudes back then were a lot different than the white dudes now. Uh, white dudes now are very, are very much uh, more liberal, I would say, than they were back then. Back then it was like, we're white, we're going to fight for ours. Didn't have like white Crips, white G. You just didn't have that. White bloods. I never saw that until very, 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 very recently. That being said, um, he kept coming around, man, trying to bum stuff off me. And I was like, look, dude, finally I got to the point where I was like, homie, the store is closed, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't got it like that. You ain't, I'm not the dude that you think, I, this ain't happening, right? So he, comes in one day he's like listen da 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 but I'd already talked to the to the guys and I was like I'm gonna fight for mine but he's gonna hurt me he's gonna he's gonna mess me up Kurt said look if you fight for yourself we'll fight for you we'll fight with you but you gotta fight for yourself You know, when I talk about fear and using it to to, to, to motivate and, and fear and, and what it's really like to be afraid for your life in a situation where there is no out, there's nowhere to go. When that person is in your cell doorway, you're not going anywhere. Know this, guys. I try to tell these youngsters this. And you can talk that good game because you, you're out here with these people in the world. But these are not the people that you're dealing with here are not these people. It's not your neighbor, Bob. It's not Scott from down the street. This is Bolo from Sussex One. A whole, uh, a, an individual that will send you to the upper room very fast. Right? And not think twice about it. 
go in his cell and eat a honey bun and watch TV. Anyway, he comes in one day and he tells basically like, hey, it's on. And I, I, I prepared myself. I stood back and I was like, and again, I would like to say to you that out of just nowhere, I turned into Jet Li and I just, wah, wah, wah. And that was, you know, boom, and that was it. I took him out. That's not what happened. <laughs> That's not what happened. He come in on me. He wanted the cheeks. He said he was going to take the cheeks. I told him that he wasn't. And we got to, he dumped me, boom. And I tried to fight and I lost. I took one of the worst butt kickings I've ever taken in my life. It might be the worst butt, butt whooping I've ever taken in my life. But I didn't get taken. I fought for myself. I fought for my life. I fought with everything I, I had. And Kurt and the other homie, Easy. Much love to Easy, bro. Soldier. He was from California. He was a uh, NLR, a Nazi lowrider from California, man. He had got shipped out here like an interstate compact deal or something. That's why he was here. This dude was only about 150 pounds. But he was blasted. Warbirds. I mean, stuff everywhere. Doing life sins for murder and bank robbery. Nobody messed with Easy. Easy came in the cell. I'm fighting, dude, dude, and I'm losing. I mean, I'm, I'm bloody. Laying there, boom, boom, trying. But Easy comes in and says, hey, yo, Bolo. Kids had enough. Leave him alone. And it was like somebody turned the switch off. Because yes, in a fist fight, could Bolo destroy Easy? Yes. But because of what Easy had, not only his potential of what he was maybe carrying on him at the time, but what he could do outside of prison to said dude's family, grandkids, daughters, sons. See, juice in prison isn't always about how tough you are on the inside. It's also about how far your reach is on the outside. You know, the guards might come and talk smack to a regular inmate, a regular convict, but they're not going to go to easy cell and straight up disrespect them. Do you think they went to Tyler Bingham's cell and straight up disrespected him? No, they didn't. You know why? One, they wanted to make it home that night. Two, that man's reach was inequivocally further than most people's. He could have you touched very far away from where he was sitting. That being said, man, I fought for mine. I stepped in. I didn't have an issue with Bolo anymore. A lot of these guys talk about the booty bandits and stuff like that. And they don't, they don't mention it ever happening to them. Or them ever having to face a real one. You have homosexuality in prison. You're always going to have it. It's not going to stop. You that doesn't that does that's not uh, predatorial. What's predatorial is some, somebody who wants to take something from somebody, whether it be an item, whether it be your freedom, your life, or your manhood. That's a predator. There is a difference. Every person that's a homosexual is not a predator. Every homosexual man does not want to jump on every dude. I have friends who are uh, LGBT who are great people. But I've also known some that were not. Unfortunately, you get put in a penitentiary setting, you will encounter those people I love you guys I don't want to see you go through that I love you guys I don't want to see you wear that butt whooping that I did I still have scars on my head to this day from that man's fist if he had wanted to take that from me he could have do you understand what I'm saying to you he was big, big enough and powerful enough and mean enough and savage enough to do that 
You can sit there and say, oh, he'd have to kill me. And he would. He would. I love you guys, man. I don't want to see you go through that. I do these videos because I'm sincere. I do these videos because I want better for you guys. I'm hoping that somebody will see the video and say, I don't want to, I don't want to meet Bolo. They called him Bolo because he looked like Bolo from the Jean-Claude Van Damme movies. Except bigger. And imagine being a 17, 18 year old kid, 19 year old kid. You're not stopping him, dude. Half y'all wouldn't stop me. Much love to the Gladiator Gang, man. Salute to all my real ones from day one. And as always, stay up, stay out. Stay sucker free, baby. Be blessed.